Hey everybody, I'm Camila. I'm Marcella. This is Revisiting Sunnydale, episode 77. Sweet. I can't believe that. I know. Welcome. How you guys doing? We are going to be doing a wrap up of season four today. And this was suggested by one of our listeners. Dory? I think so. Yes. Thank you for that. So yeah, so I know we haven't done it for individually for each season, like one, two, and three prior to this, but we'll continue this on. Mm -hmm. And if we like it. I know. Maybe we'll we'll go do another one. Maybe. Maybe we'll go back in history. Maybe. We'll see. Time travel. But also we were talking about um, after this, we were probably going to review um, that stanktastic movie with Mark Blutus. Oh, God. And Katie Holmes. Oh, first first daughter. daughter. (laughs) So I think that will be the next episode. We'll do that. Many cocktails will need to be. Yeah, we'll do that before we dive into season five Mm -hmm. because we we don't want to leave you guys just so yet. A palate cleanser. Yeah, just a little bit. Just kind of like shake it off and then walk our way through. But we have a special treat in this um, episode. We will be talking to one of the authors of the book Buffy the Vampire Slayer Slayer Stats that we have been talking about uh, off and on for the past few episodes since we got it it's the complete infographic guide of all things Buffy if you haven't gotten it yet what are you waiting for it's so much fun it's so much fun like all Buffy fans and fanatics alike should have this uh it's it's just it's it's just so fun it's another one of those things that I'm mad at myself for not doing for not doing (laughs) Like, why didn't I have this idea? I could have done this. Yeah. It's so great. You totally could have done this. Right. So we will talk uh, later on in this episode. We will be talking to Simon Guerrer. I believe. Um, I'm sure he'll correct me and let me know how to actually pronounce that last name. <laughs> probably got a roll. I know. It's probably. And he's he's uh, he's over in the UK. Oh. So there's going to be a lovely British accent. I'm glad you told me that beforehand. Or I would have just been like, oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Watch, he's like from Wyoming and right. just, and like an, ed, an expat. Over <laughs> but regardless, so we'll we'll get into that. We'll have that interview later on in this episode. Um, yeah, so I guess we should. I guess we just dive into the season four freshman rap. year. Yeah, we just kind of start with. I don't. I don't know. Okay, so I did go to the Buffy wiki. Mm-hmm. Actually, no. Wait, before we get into this, I had. Um, an experience. We're going to talk about a little personal life right okay. now. <laughs> had, it's not really Buffy r- related, but it it's is like fan girl. Yeah, it is okay. fan girl related. <laughs> so, if you're in Pittsburgh, then you know that Donnie and Mark mm. Wahlberg and their brother Paul <laughs> were, <laughs> were here the other day to open up their new Wahlburgers, uh, for, their new Wahlburgers restaurant in the North Hills mm-hmm. area. Um, I'll make night road. Did they actually show up? All well, three. This is what happened. <laughs> so, and I got a little bone to pick. <laughs> so we can tell people to show up between like two and five. Uh, my friend on and I went, um, so we get there, we got there for like one 30 or so. And um, work day. Yeah. I, I took, t- we took the time, took time off. Took the time off. <laughs> And it took me like a couple yeah. days. I was grappling with it too. I didn't. I didn't actually put in for the time off until like the day before. I was like, "Do I want to do this? <laughs> do I want to use PTO?" Like, right. <laughs> well, let's see. Well, so we um, went out there, and there's like a bunch of people there, obviously, but it's not too terrible. Uh, the way it's set up, though, there was like a little VIP line for folks to go in. So it, it was like out. It was a, it's a new newish mall okay. that's out there called the Blockway. Okay. Yeah, it's a little bit further than like they Ross need another mall. Yeah. So, and this like a, it looks like it's a, I don't know. I saw a DSW and a container store. That's the only thing that I <laughs> I really saw there. Do you enjoy a container store? I do too, and I was really stoked about it. So I might be going back mm-hmm. <laughs> just so I don't have to go all the way out to uh, Robinson. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, so that yeah, so it's like a regular mall and with like an external and an internal entrance for the Wahlburgers. So every they had everybody set up like inside the mall. Okay. And so there was like a little blockade where you couldn't really actually go into the Wahlburgers at this time. That was for the VIPs, which I found out later that you could have been invited to, as a VIP if you signed up for the Wahlberg's newsletter. Okay. Like, why would I sign up for a restaurant's newsletter? Right. It's going to give me a free food on my birthday. Right. That's yeah. The only That's reason the I knew only it. reason. <laughs> So there's that. So there's like all these people, all these people. And I'm sure like a lot of them were probably sponsors for the event or people who paid money. But there's just a bunch of old ass white mm. dudes like you guys don't get. It. And they're right. like young daughter. Like you guys don't even know. You don't know. You have no you idea. didn't live it. Right. You weren't. This wasn't your life. Like these like super duper tan and greasy. Just Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. Quote unquote elite. 
So they, we're watching all of them go in, and like we're out there and still waiting. <clears throat> so we maybe wait for until like it's probably like three when it finally when something happened, and um, Mark walks through like he walks walks the line he walks past and um now mind you mark is cool and all but that's not why i was right. there so i really didn't like i just kind of yeah. did a video like i was i'm luckily like i would say i are both pretty tall yeah so i had i was able to just like shoot my arm up and like get some video i wasn't i was maybe like four f- four feet away from him and he is smaller he looks small he's a little small um but, but he's aging well. Yeah, like he looked good. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm not mad at you. Like yeah. you know what? And but you're not why I'm here. Exactly. So I didn't try to get like there are a couple people that were right there on the line, <laughs> and they were able to get selfies with him and mm-hmm. stuff. That's not what I was there for. Right. So okay, he goes through and does his thing, and yada 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 blah blah, and like um, on Sand and I are like still like kind of paying attention to both Donnie and Mark's Instagram mm-hmm. and Twitter feed just in case they're going to do something spectacular or whatever. And so we're waiting. Everybody's waiting. And so I'm saying I get a prime spot at that line. At that point, it's like we're setting our phones up and like, mm-hmm. yes, we're going to do this. Like we're going get, to get we're getting a fucking selfie. And one of us, <laughs> you know, we take the timer off the selfie mode. And like everything is set and everything. If one of us gets pulled in, the other gets in the picture as well. Yeah. We're in this together. <laughs> so Donnie doesn't walk the line. He rolls in. He comes up via a freight elevator through the restaurant. That's messed up. So that's real messed up. I am using my opportunity now to tell you, Donald. <laughs> <laughs> you owe me. You owe me, sir. Time. Oh, my God. Wasted. And wow. I stayed there till like 4 You were outside. No, it was like it was like in the mall. Oh, like in the, the mall. Ma- in yeah. like the atrium Dude, of the mall. Dude, had I been outside, yeah. I would have bum rushed something. Like somebody <laughs> would have got like, you know what? Kick me out. I don't give a fuck. When's that? When's going to be the next time I come out on McKnight Road? <laughs> right. Like, <laughs> I don't come here. Exactly. I don't come you here. You don't know me? Mm-mm. Ban me from an entire yeah, North that's Hills. Right, that's fine. I am okay mm-hmm. with that. So yeah, Donald, I am upset. Mm-hmm. Um, we are not on good terms right now. <laughs> He's on the birth knowledge. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, Momoa. <laughs> Actually, I can't believe that happened. I was so excited for that and so sure. Mm-hmm. Like, there was just no doubt in my mind that it would, because he's typically not a canceler. Right. And it, there was no doubt in my mind that that was going to happen and I was going to be laughing my ass oh, off, like, giggling like an asshole, possibly barf in public. Who knew what, what we don't know what this was going to happen. This was going to be a beautiful moment. It was quite possible that we would have been, you know, we could have fainted, passed out, thrown yep. up, been yep. stupid, been totally fine, been totally cool. Could have gotten kicked out yep. of a wizard world. Could have ended up having Guinness that night right. at a bar. But no. No. And he's doing it to you again. Yeah, basically. Basically. So, yeah, I'm going to on a work trip to Denver, Colorado, and just so happens that it's the same week that Com- that Denver Comic Con mm-hmm. is happening. And there's didn't a lot of people going. A lot of people. There's a. I didn't know it was happening until, like, a couple days ago. Yep. And I was like, fuck me hard. Yeah. Like, I could have been on my company's dime. Yep. They would have totally paid for me to stay mm-hmm. an extra couple days. And we could have gone. <sighs> I'm so upset. Because that's the weekend of my same, party. Right. So and I, I would have moved it. <laughs> right. I might now. Like, sorry, guys. And it's the same hotel. Like, mm-hmm. it's the same convention center that our con is going to be at. Uh, our convention's going to be that's in. Up. And same hotel, I'm sure, that he's going to be mm-hmm. at. And my only... Ho- and he's... But I'm leaving Friday. He's a Saturday guest. That's, that's even... That's up. even mm-hmm. worse. That's, like, mm-hmm. just as bad. Like, even yeah. Friday, I could have been, like... I probably could have squeaked yep. something in. Mm-hmm. Or you maybe seen him yeah, check in or something exactly. now no nope. he'll probably get there saturday morning yep exactly and leave saturday afternoon yep so yeah um so uh if anybody sees donald Wahlberg jr um <laughs> let him know camila's camila's not not happy not, happy. not pleased not pleased uh you missed and out. we have a bone to pick with mr uh, jeff goldblum as well oh it's sweet fancy moses i love that you said his narrow behind <laughs> That made me laugh quite hard. And I thought that might actually get him here. Right. <laughs> narrow. I was just, uh, I was just uh, I mean, narrow behind. I, was just, I, mean, I, I mean, I've seen my, my ass isn't, isn't, isn't quite that, but it's not next to narrow. But, oh. he, has to, uh, he has to. He has to. You he can't keep flirting to. around the country and not come home. Exactly. You are, okay, sir, mm-hmm. you are releasing a jazz album. Pittsburgh yeah. is supposed to be one of the hot spots for jazz, or like birthplaces of jazz. Mm-hmm. There's like, you can't be that rude. Yeah. That's hurtful. I'll go. Oh, yeah. If he comes. Totally. For a jazz show. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm usually not a 
jazz person. I'm not. Like, I there's a per- there's a certain, like, he'll probably end up being at, like, fucking Benedum or mm-hmm. Byam or, which is fine. Which is fine. But that's not, like, I don't. I don't purposefully go to jazz shows mm-hmm. usually, but I would. I I, li- I enjoy like a jazz club. Yeah, like the I like intimacy. It. Yeah, I like that. Not setting. like a exactly. concert hall. Exactly. Jazz, it's like grammar to me, though. Grammar? How so? Because it's not constructed properly, right? <laughs> so I'm like, you're reason. not playing the same thing that you're playing, <laughs> but somehow. No, this doesn't work. My brain doesn't like this. My problem is, is like it's the fact that uh, one tune can last mm-hmm. like seventeen and that fucking too. minutes. I'm like, you know what? I need a core. I need a verse, a chorus, a verse, a bridge, a chorus. Let's get this out. Of, let's get this done. Four minutes, guys. Like, did you like that song? Which one? Is it the same? I don't know. Wait, I feel like you haven't stopped in an hour. No, that was like eight songs. Or, when did it stop? When, when did it stop? Like when? Where? Where do you differentiate? Yes. Where's the transition? <laughs> High, low? I lost it. I don't. You're lying. <laughs> and that's why oh. that Gosling movie. I was just like, I didn't even. I tried. This I, isn't real jazz either, because this is catchy and has like. I, was it good? I actually really liked it. Really? Yeah. I started to watch it, and then I was like, no. It's I didn't even. Charming. I didn't even get off the like their little freeway thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, was oh. like, <laughs> I can't believe they actually shut that freeway down to do that. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. They did that. So. Can you imagine your morning? Ca- what the fuck? <laughs> uh uh-uh. uh. No. <laughs> fuck you. Yeah. You need to do this on like a Tuesday. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> While everybody is already in work. Like, no. Like flag day. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, at like 2 a.m. Mm-hmm. How about that? Oh, God. Oof. Yeah, it was bad enough when uh, they were shooting uh, The Dark Knight Rises here and they like shut down downtown. Mm-hmm. I was so upset. I was, I was downtown. Did you go to that filming? I Accidentally. At the stadium? No, I didn't go to that one. Um, but I was like downtown getting my hair done in the morning. And by the time I left, like they had everything shut down. I couldn't get to my car. And they're like, no crossing. I'm like, but oh my God. God. I just need to get out of this place. <laughs> Oh, my God. I would have freaked out. I don't know what I would have done. What do you mean I can't go back to my car? My car is in the movie, apparently. I don't. No. No. Let me out. <laughs> Let me out. That was the hottest I've ever been in my entire life. It wasn't it like supposed to be winter yes. in, the, in the movie. So they made us all wear winter clothes. <laughs> And it was the middle of August. Uh. <laughs> you know that feeling when sweat rolls down your back? Oh, yeah. And it just hits like the crack of your ass. Mm-hmm. And you're like, I'm, I don't, why am I, I'm not even being paid for this. <laughs> oh. Like, why am I doing this? They're giving oh. me the most disgusting food. But. But you also won something that day, too. I won an iPad. And Bane gave it from, to you. Yeah. From Tom. Did, wait, did he actually hand it to he you? He did or? not hand it to me. Okay. But he was did he... make contact. Okay. Like, eye contact. And he talked to me. Okay. You know. He called the number. Was he and, in costume? Yeah. Okay. And I came down to the very front, and a girl handed it to me. Gotcha. But, yeah. I guess. And see, and I don't know what I was doing with my life at that point in time, but I wasn't. Wasn't I, a Hardy. I didn't know anything about Hardy at that. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, what took so long. Yeah. I was more, like, kind of playing, trying to look out for Justin Gord or J- Joseph, Joseph Gordon-Levitt Gordon and uh, Gary Oldman. The white John Legend. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever seen a picture of them side by side? <laughs> They look so much alike, it's weird. You're so right. I do. I've never thought about that before. You're so right. Yeah. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> and did you happen to see, normally when I see Tom Hardy out in the wild, I'm like. <gasps> what do you mean normally when you see him out in the wild? Did you see him at the royal wedding? I didn't watch that royal wedding. He was there. Okay. He was in, yeah, he was there. He didn't get to sit in the room with them, but he got to sit out with the rest of the people in the bigger room. And they just like panned on him for a second. I believe he had no hair. And he looked like a crazy person. <laughs> like he looked for Tom Hardy. He looked gross. Oh, God, I'm going to have to look this up. Like right, a what are you shooting right now? Psycho. <laughs> what he, are you like, shooting right now? A little heavy. And just not. I was just like, this is the first time in my life I've never oh, been attracted to Tom Hardy. Oh, yeah. Like it was bad. Yeah, it looks like he's fresh out of the loony bin. Yes. It's like, like, are you just, are you out on a day pass? Like, yes. What are you, <laughs> sir? Is that like Aaron Hardy? <laughs> <laughs> 
Tom Jeffrey Hardy. <laughs> like it's not exactly the Tom Hardy we were looking for. Mm-mm. What is he? He has to be making something right now. That I thought like, maybe it was Venom, but he's done with Venom, I think. And I hope. Yeah, that comes out in October. Yeah. So unless they're doing like pickup shoots for it or something, he's I not even bald in Venom though. No. Unless... Oh, there. Well, no, that's announced. Filming something called Fonzo, and he's playing Al Capone. Okay. That could, Al Capone the, wasn't bald though. The jowls. Yeah. Uh, what's Al and speaking of Momoa, I don't know. Did you see he's out of the crow? <sighs> Which I'm okay with. I'm, I'm fine. I'm with it absolutely fine. I didn't want it to happen no, in the first place. No. He died. Leave it alone. Right. Just let it be, man. Like, like it was fine. Like I'm really upset that they had all, as many sequels mm-hmm. as they did. David Just, Boreanaz. Eddie Furlong. <laughs> Is that what it? Yeah. So and also, wasn't it Stuart Townsend too? Did no, he do it one? should have been. It <laughs> should have been. Instead, they had Eric Mabius. Ah, uh, yes. Mabius. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, Ugly Betty. You are not right. Ooh. <sighs> yeah. Okay. So Momoa's out of the Crow He's remake. Added, they dropped out creative differences. Him and the director. They brought, like, I mean. How is this big, bulky? Like, that's the whole thing. I, I can't envision. He's so big. Right. I can't envision Momoa's body Mm-mm. really doing like it's supposed to like that. That's if we're going to do it, let's kind of do it. And then right. they said it was going to be more based on the graphic novels. I get that and stuff, but just please leave it alone. I don't know. Yeah, I think they should really just let it go. Just, just let it go ahead and be. I feel it's like, like it's haunted. Just mm-hmm. leave it alone. Right. Yeah, I feel like they should just, just... don't. It's just kind of, you know, it's a cult classic mm-hmm. and let it be. Mm-hmm. Just we enjoy it. Like we don't need a, a new envisioning of it. If there's a graphic novel, just let that graphic novel let that, be. Right. Do an animated version. I'm fine with right. that. There does not need to be another man. And and when I saw his makeup, it looked like they were going for that. And it's just, no, just please stop. I wasn't even sure that I was looking at... um the actual makeup i thought i kept looking at like photoshop Photoshop versions. <laughs> like fans doing it <laughs> but all right <clears throat> season four okay we've carried Freshman on long of enough college so the synopsis that i picked up off of bucky off the buffy wiki is buffy begins college feeling completely overwhelmed but once the monsters show up it's just like old times then she starts dating riley a handsome commando battling the same monsters he's part of a secret organization called the initiative and buffy is all too happy to join the team but the, but she soon suspects the initiative may be more dangerous than the monsters they are supposed to be battling. I right. feel like this season, even though it was their first year of college, mm-hmm. we got less school in this one Yeah, than we did all throughout high school. Like, they didn't go to class as much. Like, we only, it was only the psychology class was mm-hmm. the only class, really, I think, and that I we saw them in. Rewatching the freshmen last night... <clears throat> Personally, hmm. I would have filed a complaint against that professor that screamed at her. Oh, right. In that class. Because she did nothing wrong. Nothing. Like, nothing wrong. She was just asking if the class was full. Granted, she probably shouldn't have. I mean. Well, I think he asked. Did she, uh, did she interrupt to ask that? Or I feel like no. he singled her out and no. then she asked it. She was asking the person next right. to her. Okay. And she was not talking that loud. No. She was kind of whispering, but he was. she was the only other person in the room talking. Right. And he just went aggro on her for no reason. <laughs> and I I, yeah. I would have filed a complaint. She absolutely should have filed a complaint because that was yeah. uncalled for. He was just mm-hmm. pissy about whatever his little life was doing that time. <laughs> and then re- like going through some of them, I don't understand how Riley and Buffy ended up a thing because he really paid her no mind whatsoever. He was very dismissive of her. From the very beginning. Yeah. He was all into just being friends with Willow. Right. He didn't even remember her name the second time they met. Right. So I guess it was one of those things that the more he paid, like, he was just kind of paying attention to mm-hmm. her. Not even really, because it was still like he was kind of, he kind of thought of her in disregard. I think. It was like, it, she's odd. And he went up to her at the bar and when she was all weepy about Parker. Mm-hmm. And he was trying to tell her, you know, you know, my dad says, and she was just staring and he's like, you don't care. <laughs> what my dad has to say I'm, and she was like no i'm sorry what and he was like no i got people waiting i'm gonna it's like well okay all right that's one way to not get to know anybody right but i think the turn may have happened somewhere like right around when parker was real gross yeah about her and he just instinctively <laughs> knocked, knocked his head off 
<laughs> and I love Graham's reaction. <laughs> Nobody's, he's not going to tell anybody. Forrest is all freaked out. What if he tells on you? <laughs> Come here. Let me kiss, let me kiss your boo boo on your hand and make sure your fist is okay. <laughs> I want to change my answer for best couple. <laughs> <laughs> I want to make Forrest and Riley best Oh my cup. god <laughs> But overall It felt like a freshman year mm-hmm. Oh I know what it was that bugged me I was trying to remember before we started recording Something important That no. came to me That I don't think we discussed We probably did And I just have short term over 40 memory <laughs> Who knows <laughs> Why didn't Buffy and Willow just be plan on being roommates from the very beginning? I don't think that was addressed. Like, why? Because she has to be sec- secret identity right. girl again. Like, why would they leave it up to, right, to random? chance some random person being your roommate? I picked my freshman roommate mm-hmm. at orientation. We met at orientation. Mm-hmm. We thought we were going to be really good friends. We were like, let's live together. Uh-huh. So we co- both contacted the school and they put us together. Yeah. Buffy and Willow should have been roommates yeah. from the very beginning. Uh, yeah, there really should have been some mm-hmm. sort of a gloss, uh, gloss over, at least like if that wasn't the school's policy. Right. And even it if no it sense. wasn't, how did they become roommates after the fact? Right. Because <laughs> Willow just has this bitch ass that we never see. Right. Never. <laughs> Not once do we see this person. But she's always with the parties. Right. And the people over. Would have been better. Just shooting it out there because we never talked about it before. Mm. Should have made Veruca her roommate. Oh, and that's how Oz met her. Yeah, that would have been interesting. And then she's just everywhere. Was Veruca actually a student? Yeah, she okay. was a student because she's in the that really uncomfortable scene in the quad when they're. Oh yeah, yeah. I just thought that she was just mm-hmm. loitering. <laughs> shirt, good shirt. <laughs> um, bitch, you don't know me. <laughs> Look at your shirt. <laughs> you don't know me. So yeah, they should have. That's one thing I picked up. Yeah, they should have been roommates from the very beginning. Yeah, Makes I don't no know sense. Why they wouldn't have done that? Just to get Kathy there, right. I guess to throw her into a. But that's too dangerous. It is. Like there could have been another way to to like throw Kathy in there. Some I don't know, but. And let's be honest. Does Buffy really look like the dorm type? No. She but, never would have. She well, would have. I don't think she any. has no money. Her mom doesn't have any money for her, like off campus right. living, and so Buffy was just trying to not to be living in mom's in house. mom's house anymore. Yeah. <laughs> but. If they were to remake this show, mm. I really think Buffy, Willow, and Xander would have gotten some kind of apartment yeah. together. Like Donna, David, and Kelly oh, living yeah. at the beach house. That's right. You know, like, the, and this kind of continues on, but they're just so anti-getting jobs. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just really kind of Except for Xander. He has a different job right. every week, and they're just the stupidest jobs yeah. until he gets the construction. Right. Like you his know, ice cream which, man, he's selling no like experience. protein bars. Or, <laughs> yeah, how does he? Is there some sort of internship? Is there like a right. low level right. person to work on a construction he's crew? He's replacing the gym and the like yeah. the 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 actual gym thing, the Jimmy Slat thing. <laughs> yes, in the window <laughs> and cut measure twice, cut once. What? Where? Where? Where'd you <laughs> learn all this? <laughs> that was actually that was was that this season? Or that, that was, was five. Not until, yeah. Okay, five. Yeah, he starts getting like. Season four, he just has no career path at all. But he was in, right, yeah, exactly. But he was, he started off, maybe this was the first one, was when he was doing the construction site for Pang and p- during Pangs. Pangs. Yeah. Is that the first time Digging we the see hole. him? On, yeah. He was a hole digger. Yeah. Is that the first time we mm-hmm. see him on a construction site? Yeah. And then for some reason, it doesn't happen, happen after that. Mm-mm. And then he starts to get into it more, I guess, in season five. Yeah. Like with one crew, it seems he gets in with one company, yeah, and they just keep giving him jobs. Hmm. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know how that works. Not all the construction sites. And, no, and I don't that get thing it. Works. Um. All right. So yeah. So with this season, it's to me, it just signifies a whole lot of what we all go through what we all went through i guess you know graduating from high school and now either you go to college or you don't go to college and just like buffy was doing a lot of trying to find herself in this madness and she i mean which i think it just kind of continues about the whole series of buffy trying to find herself except none of these people put on the freshman 15 and everybody yeah puts on the fresh either (laughs) exactly either in food Mm -hmm. or in beer Mm -hmm. 
that 15 pounds is getting. I think Xander may have put it on, but yeah, for everyone. <laughs> yeah. It just. <sighs> so Buffy, you know, she has her whole jacked up relationship track record is kind of kept intact. And Parker. I don't get Parker. I, there's a line when she in the beer episode, she tells Xander Parker's problem with intimacy is that he can't get enough of it. And I knew it. No, you didn't. No. Or you wouldn't have done it. No. So, and then she, there's, then she has a line that I really didn't like. She called herself a slut. Yeah. And that's that, not okay. That's not okay. Because like literally, like he was the second dude she'd had sex with. <laughs> Ever. 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 And, and he charmed the shit out of you. Right. Like, for several weeks, it yeah, seemed like. Exactly. And it wasn't like it was the first night. Right. And she just fell for like a one liner. Right. No, he put in work. Yeah. For that, like it was all manipulative, mm-hmm. and it was all he had nothing more. But like he was playing the long game right. for a, or for a while. And sure, he he dropped you like a hot potato. Yeah. It was it was rough. It was terrible. It was it was gross. It was it was terrible. <laughs> I feel bad for you. It was so terrible. Like it Especially was really because... bad. And then even when like he was honest with her about it, but mm-hmm. it was like that's not. He wasn't honest from Jump Street. No. That's the problem that I had with that whole thing is that. I'm sorry if you were confused. How could I not be? How, yeah. You didn't present an alternative. Right. You presented we like each other. Right. We're going to do this. We, you I appear see so where much, I am. Yeah. Okay. I see so much in you. And mm. like you're being, he's being so deep and like understanding and like listening intently. And yeah. And like, we we'll share this moment together. My dad. Yeah. So I don't understand. I, I I do like that she finally hits him with that yes branch, uh, but she's under the influence. That's not true. Like I just wanted her to hit him, right? And she should have. She should have. So Although was, she could have punched through his face, but yeah, I'm sure she could have scaled back just mm-hmm. enough not to kill him. But. And now here's the downside of this: <laughs> she's so clingy that he's even like that was. Banging fucking sex. <laughs> Stamina for days. Mm-hmm. But. <laughs> Stage five clinger. Yeah. Yeah. Sirens like. <laughs> apparently it's not worth it. Okay. So, you know, this whole entire school year, we just see the gang. They're trying to stay together, mm-hmm. but they're like drifting apart as people do in yeah. college and stuff. Um, You, you, just things get a little bit different. Xander's not on campus with them. Willow is finding new interests that don't include Buffy. Buffy is all has her head up every like dude's ass. I don't know. But, she's but, really, she doesn't grow much at all. No, she's pretty much just you know. I'm, yeah, she's very preoccupied with the whole Slayer nonsense. Whatever. <laughs> with her whole lot in life, but she's also not really paying attention no. to her friends. And you know, there's something that's even mentioned later on where you know. Willow talks about all the changes that she's going through and Buffy just didn't notice no. or didn't take the time to care. And even she, Willow's like, I've done this and this and and, Will, right. and Buffy's still just like, mm-hmm. Meh, meh, sir. did you see what Riley was wearing? <laughs> Table flip. Uh, and even Giles is going through his thing because he's got no job and he's a man of leisure now. <laughs> Number one, how is he paying for his flat? I don't know. How's he paying for food? Has he paying for his booze? <laughs> I would have loved to see him like hit up Joyce for money. <laughs> you know, I've been taking care of your kid for the last couple of years now. So. I've been her dad, basically. <laughs> I need some support. <laughs> I need child support because I'm taking care of Buffy. Right. I guess we're just to assume that Giles is just very, very spin. That he's very thrifty. Well, he's not getting unemployment from like he can't be collecting unemployment. No. So, but was he getting paid from the? He was getting paid from. Yeah, and he also got. No, that's later on with gets the retroactive. Yeah, but he gets he's getting paid by them, but then he's also getting paid a, a school librarian salary. I, oh, so maybe he's getting unemployment from the school librarian salary. Maybe, which maybe can't be much. It. No, but yeah, gentlemen of leisure, get yeah. a job. Well, I guess he's only been out of work for a year. Not even a couple months. Yeah. So the summer. Yeah. All right. From the summer. And then by the time we get to season five is when he has this chunk of money to go ahead and buy the magic box. I guess. Sure. sure. Loans. All right. Sure. Loans, bank loans, whatever. Yeah, right. Collateral. What did he have to put up? <laughs> His Citron? No. 
And how did he trade the Citron in for the BMW? No idea. Where is Gi- Giles sells drugs? <laughs> We've just uncovered a That's scandal. It. That's the big secret. Mm-hmm. That's what Giles is doing. He seems like, you know, he would be in the, the, in the underbelly mm-hmm. of some world. Like I could not the top, not the kingpin, yeah. but he's like one of the higher ups. I could totally see that. Here's something that we're missing from season four. Hmm. And we were talking about it earlier with we don't see much schooling. Mm hmm. In season six, we get a taste of Willow's addictive behavior Mm -hmm. with her addiction to magic. Right. Addictive behavior like that doesn't come from any, like, just come out of nowhere. Right. So I would have loved an arc for her where she was so consumed by her studies Mm -hmm. that she started taking Adderall. Right. Or... Something. Yeah, we just need some sort, just a hint mm -hmm. of something. We didn't need like a full blown, you know, drug addiction, but something. Willow's the type of academic person that pushes themselves too far. Right. Takes too many classes. Mm -hmm. Even though they were brilliant in high school, they flounder a bit in their first year. Right. And they try to do too much. Yeah. Yeah. And they didn't do that with her. They just assumed that she was still just as great. And And she'd be fine. Yeah. In season five, we get that shot. Like somebody wants to borrow her notes. And she like freaks out about. Highlighting her dog. Right. I still think even then she's taking some kind of. Yeah. Speed. Right. You know, they just start telling us. Yeah. That she's doing it. Yeah. There should have been a little bit of something. Because she goes back to that person like two or three times. And I think that person was about to say, you know what? Never mind. Not worth it. Not worth (laughs) it. No. (laughs) forget i will just i don't need these kind of problems i got my phone (laughs) i'm a snap pictures turn the page you turn the page i don't need your shit (laughs) but that's college that's freshman year and that's what season four is until it turns into private benjamin Mm -hmm. and her lucky band of soldiers right and on some level even though it all turned to shit Mm -hmm. if she would have really invested in that Mm -hmm. she could have excelled yeah. With them. Yeah, she could have. She would have had the entire force of the U.S. government military Seriously. behind her while she was out patrolling. Right. It's just, and it, did it just come down to the fact that Maggie was doing something shady and she didn't want Buffy mm-hmm. around to see it? Yep. The whole If she hadn't brought up 314, I bet Maggie wouldn't have tried to kill her. Probably. Maggie would have kept on. Now, that's the interesting thing is how did Maggie foresee this whole plan going down? Seriously. And was it... Because it seemed like towards the end of that episode, it seemed like that um, the higher ups were in on it or were aware of it. So was the like was the plan to make a whole new human race or was the plan just to make these superpower soldiers? Right. It didn't seem like there were a lot of checks and balances with Maggie. They kind of let her do whatever she wanted. Yeah. But also her knowledge was a little hit or miss over this whole season, too. Mm -hmm. Like you're supposed to be running this huge demon thing. Right. And knowing what you don't know what a slayer is. You thought it was a myth. Uh-huh. So you didn't check? And pack of wild dogs. <laughs> Woman, you know those were werewolves. Exactly. And you threw your bag at threw it. Threw your bag at it. Like she didn't have a trank gun on her. Right. Come on. Missed opportunity. Yep. She should have been a badass. Mm-hmm. But no. But no, she's a she they it was like, well, okay, so she's in charge of this giant military thing, but she's still just a lady and she's scared and she ran away. Like that's bullshit. Bullshit. I, I call bullshit on that. There's yeah. no way. Mm-mm. Nope. Not as not how as tough as she is with all their soldiers and mm-hmm. as like and even her students, like right. in class. Right. Like she I talk fast. Yeah. I expect you to keep up. Yeah. I don't have time for you for your slacking. Uh, and, and I don't she give a fuck. scream like a little girl. Yeah. And ran away. Now, I will give it to her when you see Giles running at you like that. <laughs> that, that was unexpected, I'm that sure. Was that unexpected. was unexpected. <laughs> she probably had never seen a demon like right. that. That I get. These are werewolves. You know. You know what they are. Yeah, that's And you like... should run a little faster, actually. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, guys. Now is the time you've been waiting for. We're going to uh, interrupt this program for... We're going to have a chat with author of... Buffy the Vampire Slayer Slayer Stats, one of the authors, Stephen Guerrer. Simon Guerrer. Simon. Damn it. Steve is the other Steve one. Steve is the other one. We didn't one. get to talk to Steve. <laughs> we didn't get to talk to Steve. <laughs> All right. So without further ado, here is our chat with Simon. All right. So uh, Simon Guerrier, thank you so much for joining us here on Revisiting Sunnydale. My pleasure. My pleasure. Um, I Just so you know, I'm Camila. 
I'm Marcella. Hello. Okay. So we are going to get into this. We just have some, um, you know, some rando questions. And so you are one of the the authors of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Slayer Stats. I am, yes. First of all, how did this come to be? How did this glorious piece of fan work come to be? Uh, I was, uh, I had a comment on my blog uh, from Courtney Anderson at Insight Editions, uh, a publisher based in San Francisco. Uh, and she had liked a Doctor Who book of uh, uh, infographics I've done called Who Graphica. Um, and basically said, would I like to work on a Buffy version? Um, and my first thought was, are you legitimate? Are you, <laughs> you know, is this, are you for real? Because um, this isn't something that happens a lot. Uh, uh, people offering me work on my blog. Um, right. So uh, uh, my first thing to do was to check her out. And then what they were quite keen on was to get the same team who'd worked on Who Graphica. So that was my co-author, Steve O'Brien. Uh, and the illustrator on that was a guy called Ben Morris. But because they wanted the book, the original plan was to have the book come out for the um, 20th anniversary last year. So the deadline was really, really tight. I mean, we talked to them... I think in the middle of November, the original delivery for all the, the copy was the 4th of January. So it was oh, really, wow. really tight. And we were already committed to other things. Mm-hmm. So um, Ben had to had to say no, because he was actually, he was already working on another project with me. Um, but Steve and I negotiated a month's extension to the deadline uh, and basically went, we will write it really fast so, so that's what we did <laughs> were you guys already fans of Buffy the Vampire Slayer oh yeah 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 uh, uh, Steve uh, had been uh, and I think still does write for a, a UK sci-fi magazine called SFX oh uh, okay yeah in, I've seen that magazine and back in the day that meant he'd interviewed a lot of the cast and crew um, and he, he lives in the same part of the world as Anthony Head so knew oh. him reasonably well I, I met Anthony Head at the recording of a radio sitcom a few years ago once oh, wow. very briefly but, oh, wow. um, but so, so part of our initial pitch was maybe we'd use some of the interviews that that steve had because he'd ask them things like you know what's your favorite episode or you know what's your favorite line of dialogue and we were like we could do infographics about that maybe mm. but um but as we as we talked the idea through with the editors they were like we'd rather it was about the the fiction of the show rather than about the cast and crew and stuff. So, so that's, that's the way we went. Yeah. Because that's, yeah. I mean, that would have been cool, Mm -hmm. but we really just two of us, like Marcella and I have been like super duper fans for quite some time. And uh, so this is like something that we've always been missing. Like two things personally that I have always needed in my life was a map of Sunnydale and the timeline for Angel. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) So um, how did you come about with the, how did you figure out the map, the layout of Sunnydale? Oh, uh, uh, it's in some episodes. You, I think there's three episodes where you see a map of Sunnydale. There's a, there's oh. a map, there's a map in the mayor's office that we get quite a good oh. look at. Okay. There's a map that Andrew has in season seven when they're right. planning a stakeout. And mm-hmm. there's another map in, oh, I used to know this off by heart. Um, <laughs> uh, there's another map. And, and they're all quite, je- you don't get a lot of detail, but, mm-hmm. but you can see enough that once you start going, where, where would things fit in? And then there was also a map published in one of the other Buffy books that we got a look at. Okay. So, having, so what we did was we, uh, uh, Steve and I, used the evidence in the episodes to put our own idea of what the map should be like together. And then uh, the publisher found this other map that had been published in one of the other books. I'm, I'm afraid I can't remember which one it was. And, and we kind of checked our thinking against that and okay. corrected a few things or, or just, you know, tr- just to give it a bit of, um, uh, uh, so they synchronize a bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, although I think our map is still a bit different, but, but um yeah, that 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 was kind of the rule for the book as a whole. Just just taking stuff from the episodes and going, I've got an idea for something visual we could do. Oh no, we really liked it because it it helped us go. All right, Buffy, 
your house is not that far from the university. You could have gone to see your mom a little more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and also her mom drives her to school. Uh, yeah. And doesn't need to, you know. No, I, does not need to at all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you just go, that's that's Joyce just being a bit controlling. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> this gives us so much more insight into not just the town in itself, but the characters. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, yeah, and, yeah. And, and he, uh, but also, because we watch the series from beginning to end mm-hmm. um, while we were doing the book, and we kind of divided it up a bit. So, um Steve did series two and I did series three just so that we could catch up a bit because we were mm-hmm. obviously we were so tight for time. But um, but you, re- you what, one of the things that you see is they keep adding bits to Sunnydale mm. as the series goes on. Right. And in um, and it, you know and you get that great line in the in uh, Buffy versus Dracula where they go, hang on, there's a castle. Um, <laughs> and he, yeah, and, and an airport. And like, <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's a one Starbucks um, town, right? But yeah, 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 and an airport. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, all right. So, yeah, you mentioned in the introduction here that you guys spent months watching and rewatching the episodes, and I could just only imagine that, like, your plan wall this was just looked like something of that of someone trying to figure out a crime or the the conspiracy theories around the world. I, I, <laughs> I wish it had been that organized. It was, uh, <laughs> It was it was more kind of just like a mad panic of um, the, the the most helpful thing was that we'd already done a book for Doctor Who, okay. So we had a, we had an idea about the sorts of charts and diagrams and infographics that worked, and our there was quite a lot of stuff, or there, there was a fair few things on the Doctor Who book that hadn't worked and because they hadn't worked and they'd been scratched from the book we knew that they weren't going to work on the Buffy book. So Mm -hmm. we kind of came with it going, what's the stuff that worked well? What's the stuff that was easy to do? What's the stuff that was most satisfying? So uh, actually, looking through my emails before I spoke to you, the first thing I did was got cracking on building a spreadsheet of all the times Buffy had killed somebody, all the times somebody had died on screen, all the time somebody had been sired on screen. Wow. Those sort of things go because immediately once you've got the data, the uh, the designers can start going. Well, I you know now I've got the data. I can try different stats packages and oh, what yes. works best right. to make that visually interesting. So, so we really got cracking on that very quickly. Yeah. Okay. So we do have a couple of questions about um, your kill chart as well as the sire chart, Marcella. Okay. <laughs> yeah. My question: We have been racking our brains to figure out. <laughs> How Buffy killed 15 humans. Like, who were these uh, people? <laughs> and we could not figure it out. Uh, well, the, the, the big thing, the big thing is she kills 10 people in Spiral, uh, yes. which is uh, the 20th episode of Series 5. Okay. Um, that's, the, um, that's when she's, d- defend, they're all in a siege where, where Glory's trying to steal uh, 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 God, I've just. Oh, just okay. Yeah, the trying, to, try, trying to get the, the knights. Yeah, the yeah, knights. yeah. And the knights, yep. the knights are established earlier in the season as being human. Yep, oh. the knights of the Zantium. Completely Buffy, forgot all Buffy, about them. Buffy goes out and fights them all, and yep. then what you get is this, is this establishing shot of all of these bodies, and I freeze framed that shot and counted <laughs> bodies oh and came out ten. Wow. So that's that's ten. Mm. Um, I forgot and, about the knights. Uh, sorry, I forgot about the knights. Yeah, they're not human yeah, to yeah, me. To- my brain. Yeah, totally missed it. Uh, and then uh, uh, I did. Um, I've just been through in my notes for for who else there is. There's um, she kills the um, she kills Faith's watcher in Revelations. Oh, whose name yep. I've forgotten? The, um, um, Gwendolyn Pierce. Yeah, post. post. Gwendolyn Pierce. Yes, who, post, who yeah. sounds sounds and behaves like all English people. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is, you know, it's it's like looking in a mirror when I watch that episode. <laughs> um, there's uh, uh, there's her. This year's girl has her killer human. I'm trying to remember who that is um, from the middle of season four. Um, 
I'm trying to remember who that is. And this year's girl. Hmm. The faith one. Yeah. The other one we could not remember. We kind of figured out it was Willow's kill chart and yeah. her 2.5 humans. We figured the 0.5 was Cordelia and the Wishverse with Xander. Because it said. She, yeah, she shares, she yeah. shares a killing with yeah. Xander, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah. And then we got Warren. She killed Warren, but we couldn't figure out who the other one was. Uh, and she kills. I'm just having a look through my notes. Because I thought you'd probably ask me this. Because sort of <laughs> <laughs> um, the thing is, not only did we deliver it, but we had the editorial um, mm-hmm. uh, asking us questions at all times. So she kills... Uh, 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 uh. So Willow kills. Right. So she and Xander share a kill in The Wish. Mm-hmm. He I kills that. somebody in Doppelgangland through uh, three sixteen. Oh, okay. She kills somebody in Choices three nineteen, and she kills the housemate in the Freshman, doesn't she? No, no, she kills a vampire at the beginning of yeah, the right. Freshman, I think. So yeah, you have you right. have the somebody in Choices. You have um, she killed Sandy. Sandy. That's and, right. That's right. Yeah. Was Sandy cho- is that the one in choices? She's the one in Doppelgangland. Okay, so Sandy yeah. choices and then the half was Cordelia. Okay. All right. And we don't there's... realize that she killed Sandy until Sandy comes back and is a vampire with Riley. Right. And makes that's and right. bites Riley in the alley. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's right. And then uh, something blue. She kills somebody in something blue from early season four. Uh, 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 uh and two people in listening to fear. Um, uh, 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 I can't remember who they are. Um, I would, I would have to go back to my notebooks and go through who I who. That's okay. Who, You've done your homework. We we believe okay. you. If you say that Buffy killed mm-hmm. fifteen humans, she totally did. <laughs> I believe it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. All right. Um, there was another question. Oh yes, you have in the sire charts in um, I believe it's da- Darla's Darla and. Yeah, Darla's timeline. You have Darla having sired Spike, but you also have it in Drusilla's timeline. Uh, is this on page 106? Uh, 105. <laughs> Oh yeah, in 1880 she sired mm. Spike. Unless that was Oh yeah. I think that might be an error. Gosh. <gasps> oh my god, what do we win? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll I'll um I'm actually on the top of a very high makeshift sort of building with a running board on it. I might just pull myself <laughs> off the top of it. Um, <laughs> we get cookies. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, one, one of the problems with the um, the timelines when we were doing them was to make them look consistent. You base them on the one you'd done before. Yep, right. So, so, so when we were proofing it, some of the information did get mixed up. But I think, yeah, yeah, I think we've um, and it, and also there was a there was a there was a thing we did run into, which is a, a confusion about how siring works Um. because what happens if you what what is your relationship to the person who sired the person who sires you well i know that drusilla refers to darla as grandmama Grandmama. (laughs) exactly (laughs) exactly and i think i think that's a vestige of what that is Mm -hmm. Um, yeah which we which we should have made clearer but, um, yes, well done. You've spotted our That's... deliberate <laughs> entirely meant. We win the prize. Exactly. That was a, that yeah, was well just done. a call out. That was, that was the oh, geek look. check. What, right what a relief it is that you found it at last. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I have to tell you, personally, I am super excited because I loved this book and I'm a huge Doctor Who fan, too. So knowing that there's one like this for Doctor Who, 
I might have to leave right now and go. Right, you've just I'm totally just, made Marcel. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Well, yeah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a died in the hall. Oh, sorry, that's that's my son coming into us with <laughs> okay. Harry Potter. Um, hang on a sec. I'm okay. just going to shut the door. One no problem. One. You can read him Harry Potter, Jasper. <laughs> This page was so funny. <laughs> well, sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Which Harry uh, Potter is he reading? <laughs> we are we are on to book five. Oh. Uh, so uh, uh, Harry's just had tension with uh, Dolores Umbridge. Okay, this is, this is where it starts to get a little a little dark. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. And we're we're, we're kind of stuck in the thing that. I'm not sure it's quite suitable now, uh-huh. uh, but all his friends at school have seen it already. So it's just like, well, you know, we've just got to bow on now, haven't we? Um, yeah. yeah. You've committed now. <laughs> yeah. 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 So which one of you, um, uh, which one of you gentlemen channeled your inner Cordelia for the commentary for the geek chic? <laughs> well, well, uh, it was a bit of, um, we kind of had to egg each other on, really. So we, we both <laughs> made suggestions. I think Steve wrote the first version of it. Mm. And then we kind of, it kind of went back and forth between us. But but actually, the, the team at Insight made some, suge- some suggestions as well. Um, and uh, one, of the, one of the things that we, um, one of the things that we did kind of have to negotiate a bit was the tone of the book, mm. how cheeky we were, how much... Like I um I made a joke in one of the things about um Tara dying and just was a bit glib about it and kind of went boo hoo. Oh. And, <laughs> and yeah, uh, apparently this is quite a sensitive area and like, a lot of people <laughs> feel still feel quite emotional and raw. It's and, still um, raw, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I was like I was like, you know I I, th- I think I think the, the team at Insight kind of had to take their time and working out how basically to tell me I was being a dick. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> so, so there were a few things about getting the humor right, and and because you, know, you want to you want to have fun with it, but you don't want to make fun of it. So, right. so the Cordelia thing, yeah, I think that was one of the ones that went back and forth a bit to get it right. Um, it but a lot of it was just going back to the episodes and going, what did she say? And, right. and so, you know, that that was kind of where we went with it. Mm-hmm. Do you have a, f- a favorite character? Oh, <laughs> oh! I really like, I really like Jonathan. Oh wow! I think he's, I think he's such a. a the thing that I really like about Jonathan is he's such a sympathetic character, mm-hmm. while at the same time being this terrible, awful nerd. Uh, and I say that as a terrible, awful nerd myself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and also, he's quite mean and selfish as well. Mm-hmm. And yet, and yet, he's really he's he's a really complex. For, for what was originally sort of a one note joke character, mm-hmm. they really do something interesting by by you know as as he goes through it. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I like him a lot. Uh, and he ends up being heartbreaking. It's just right. Really sad. Yeah, yeah. Where he ends and, up. And, and, and actually, and actually, the bravery of doing that, of mm-hmm. going, yeah, let's kill this popular sort of established yep, right. character to to underline the shock of it. I just think that's a, you know, the, the, the danger in in any TV show mm-hmm. once you've been going a few long is everybody gets a bit too safe because you're mm-hmm. thinking about, you know, you're you're thinking about how much you like your cast members and stuff, not right. about what's best for the show. I was thinking of. Um, I, I love the West Wing, but there's a bit towards the end of I, can't, I think it's in season six where they make uh, CJ something like Secretary of State or whatever. She takes over from from Leo in the final season, and you go, "What the press secretary?" <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I know you want to give the actors <laughs> to do that are interesting and stuff, and keep, but 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 really, um, I just, I just I, I'm. I can see them kind of, you know, that, like one of the things you can see them struggling with after season three is what to do with Giles. Yeah, right. I, you know, and it's kind of like by the end of season five with running the magic box and whatever, they've kind of found him something. But but there's a whole load of episodes in season four where you go, 
yeah, he's having a midlife crisis. <laughs> right. He's, he's singing in a, he's singing sappy songs in a cafe. <laughs> yeah, and, get Will, a job, man. <laughs> and Willow is kind of like, oh, he, you know, I've always fancied him. And you're going, yeah, you're, you've got some very strange interests in men. You know, <laughs> that should be a giveaway to all uh, well, your friends, I, right? Well, there. it's the accent. <laughs> Right, <laughs> right. We uh, American birds are suckers for <laughs> for an English. Yep, for the Brit. Well, you're you you know I I can only imagine how uh, this conversation is going. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, it's going excellent, Simon. You're doing a great <laughs> job. <laughs> Quite frankly, it's all just been a, a big ruse just to talk to you for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, do you but have like better. a? What's that? No, it's very kind of you to uh, to be patient with this tired old man. But yes, thank you. <laughs> um, do you have a favorite episode? Oh, or one of your favorite episodes? Uh, there's a, there's a bunch um, that I really like. I th- I I actually I was a bit surprised because I you know I was watching it. I I watched it. I got into Buffy in two thousand. Um, okay. And the first one I saw was Buffy versus Dracula. Huh. Which, uh, and some friends of mine were really into Buffy and I just happened to be around their house and you know in those days in the UK you kind of had to um, you kind of had to know people who could get you the special stuff <laughs> uh, uh-huh. it, was, it was a few days after it had aired in the US and so you know and it came on a videotape you know it's, yeah. we're talking there was like there was like effort mm-hmm. being put into acquiring this stuff. Oh yeah, um, I'm, yeah. We were we are from the v, the VHS age, <laughs> and uh, and I um yeah I watched it because I was round when they had this tape that they were all like yeah we've got it we've got it do you wanna do you wanna got the stuff know, man <laughs> do you wanna do you wanna come into the back room and see what we've got and um, you got the secret handshake <laughs> and I was kind of like well yeah it's fun and I'd seen the movie like years before I was like yeah all right all right um. And then they were really into it and, and stuff. And I was like, well, look, if I'm going to watch it, I want to watch it from the beginning. And they literally said, oh, we've got the videos. Of the first <laughs> so I, I carried away with me that night, these great big <laughs> box sets and stuff, and worked my way through them. And, and, and it was, you know, so I watched it all. And then I was a bit surprised when I kind of was looking at Buffy fandom a, a, a bit later but there were people who were going, oh, you know, whatever it was, they didn't like certain episodes or they didn't like Xander or whatever it might have been or they disagreed with stuff. I was going, I really enjoyed it. I didn't really I didn't really dislike any of it. I just thought it was funny. And even, even the episodes that weren't as great, as good, mm-hmm. all had something that were, mm-hmm. all had something about them. That, that, and, and, and because I kind of watched it in a binge and watched sort of three or four or no, I was young then and could devote a weekend to watching television and stuff. <laughs> I kind of, you know, I just kind of sailed through it, just thinking this is great, and and kind of, uh, so I kind of mainlined it. I think. <laughs> so, um, so actually, the big thing about watching it again for this book was kind of going, oh yeah, you watch individual episodes and you go, yeah, that episode lands better than that one, or. Mm-hmm. You know, they've run out of ideas for monsters or they're, you know, as I say, you know, they don't know what to do with Giles or, mm-hmm. um, yeah, Tara's not got anything to do in this one. She's just in right. the background. And, she, and yet she's a really interesting episode. She's a really interesting character. So I think something like um, Who Are You from season four, the mm-hmm. one where uh, Faith takes over Buffy's body. Right. And nobody notices. And that's right. some, of her, some of her friends think that's an improvement. Yes. Um <laughs> And Tara's the one who notices that something that's right. You just go, that's a brilliant, mm-hmm. absolutely brilliant bit of writing. Because, it, you know, body swap episodes in TV shows have, have been done. Mm-hmm. But that one is really, um, really amazing. And, and I realise, I must have realised at the time, but I realise now that the first bit of fiction I ever got paid for, which was in 2002, was a Doctor Who story where, where the Doctor's enemy the master escapes from prison by swapping his brain with mm. the um the third doctor and as far as the third doctor's companion and his mates at unit are concerned it's an improvement because suddenly the doctor is like <laughs> that's a total rip off fantastic that. um and yeah so so i owe buffy a lot just for that it got me my first paid gig that's so, awesome um, yeah yeah H- having what having watched it in the 
having being from the UK and watching it in the UK, is there were there a lot of like American jokes and references that maybe didn't land or didn't connect that you didn't connect with at all? I mean, was there a lot or? Um, I think the main thing is just how mad your ideas of Britain are. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the, the the English people in it are the, the, uh, one of the things. My pet theory, as a result of doing this book, is you can tell that my, my pet theory is that James Masters' accent <laughs> is him doing Anthony Head as Anthony Head <laughs> normally talks. That's basically it because um, because, like because Spike, Anthony supposedly Spike, trained um, James yeah, to do yeah. it. Yeah. Because Spike has a really good. English accent, mm-hmm. and you know, an American's doing English accents is almost as excruciating as uh, <laughs> in- English people doing American accents. Especially mm-hmm. in the name's Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes, but, right. um, <laughs> but, but he's but Spike is notably good. Actually, that's one of the recommendations I had when I first started watching it. Was there's an American guy doing an English accent, and it's really good. Um, we were upset then, when we found out he was American, actually. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we met him, and then we had no idea that he uh-huh. wasn't... <laughs> he wasn't... Oh, was we were lightweight it was offended. so disappointing, yeah. Um, yep. But in season six, when Anthony heads back in the UK, Spike's accent wobbles. And, mm. and that was what that was my clue as to where this came from. Interesting. Um, but, but all of the... Um, all of the... the the watches and the watches council and stuff. You know, that's all. That's all expat English actors living in California who've gone oh. native. They don't sound like British people. <laughs> They've gone um, native, <laughs> but you know, not not as bad as um, not as bad as the the English band in uh, in Lost. This rock band, and you go oh, drive yeah. shaft, drive, drive shaft. shaft. And you go, oh. That is like that is like no British bands for one thing. Oh, one you thing, all, it's, everybody. It's, not, it's it's in no way ironic or playful, which is missing the entire entirety of British culture right there. Um, a bit too po faced and serious, and 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 actually the guy in it is quite likable, and um and that's a real shame because. Basically, that character should be Spinal Tap. That's, mm-hmm, that's what right. Spinal, Spinal Tap is is that's Americans getting British culture, British um, accents, everything, okay. absolutely spot mm-hmm. on. That's that's a no. That's what you should be aiming for, and and that's Good kind of know. where. Yeah. And basically, Spinal Tap is what the Watch Council should be like. It should mm-hmm. be a bunch of sort of posh idiots, right. like the management of Spinal mm-hmm. Tap. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, they're all dressed a bit too immaculately. Um, yeah. Lots of tweed. All got, yeah, yeah. And their teeth are all too good. <laughs> <laughs> There's that one that has the crush on Spike. She's, right. she's extra. She's very extra. Her accent <laughs> is real, real extra. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, but, you know, Americans like... So, like, uh, uh, Daisy Ridley in... Um, Mm-hmm. In Star Wars, in Star Wars. You know, the, th- right. the thing, the thing, watching Force Awakens and whatever is go. So she's like this street agent, a street uh, street urchin who's uh, grown up in the desert with no friends and family and stuff. She speaks really well, doesn't she? Really, she's really well. Posh. She's like you know, <laughs> she, she'd be hanging around with Hugh Grant in Notting Hill. <laughs> right. She's proper posh, mm-hmm. and um, no, that 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 is not the accent she would have in the desert, really, is it? You know, no, no. That's, that's, she's going to turn out to be like the daughter of the queen of, I don't know, Naboo or something. Yeah, because um, <laughs> she's too posh. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, but but you know, um, my problem, cool. my problem is that I'm after we are done hang after we've hung up with you, I'm going to continue to speak in a British accent because I, that's my thing. <laughs> Apparently, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I I tend to do that. You Madonna? So, yes. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm really keeping it together not to do this while I'm on the call. It's, it's fine. Well, you, Alexis you do what you have is to. another one. <laughs> Wesley's <laughs> another one that I found out was not, well, he right. was born in the UK. Okay. But grew up I, I'm not, in I don't know LA much about something. Alexis. So his accent's really weird. Yeah. Yeah, and, yeah. Some so his accent is sometimes very, very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it but it wobbles a bit. Mm-hmm. The first uh, time he was on How I Met Your Mother and didn't have one. <laughs> Ugh. Yeah. Oh, but he's uh, you, you were asking about favorite characters. Mm-hmm. I mean, especially he he is so funny. Oh and yeah. Especially when we get into it. One of the things we had to agree 
because of the timeline and also because of licensing was that we couldn't really cover angel mm, right um, i was wondering we, that we, yeah <laughs> we got some angel into it into the timeline and stuff but but a bit few and far between but basically because we had to make the book manageable to be done within the, the time right. that they, they needed in by and stuff but um but that was a shame because because he's so good in that yeah he's so funny and he turns on a knife edge you know and real what an actor i mean yeah. actually the, the 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 acting in buffy is is as a whole is really good it's very 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 rarely that it that it doesn't completely hold your your belief and stuff the tone of it is always so good mm-hmm it's like really spot on um yeah and wesley's arc that he goes through like i love it i love it like where he starts and then where he ends in angel it's just it's it's so so deep so dark he gets so dark probably best character (laughs) development yeah Yeah. and and also and also especially early on he reminds me of one of my best friends quite a lot and uh and that's yeah that's a british person right there Being a total idiot, right, right there. That's uh, that's, that's us to a team. <laughs> well, I do have like a personal um, opinion here on you have the battle of the Slayers here, where uh, where we talk about the Buffy versus Faith, and um, you call it a draw in this year's girl, and I feel yeah, like yeah. Faith so like say, Faith successfully switched the bodies. In my mind, that's yeah, a win. Yeah. That's a win. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and yeah, maybe yeah. just because uh, I'm just uh, I'm feeling some kind of way because Faith has no wins here, and I'm just like I'm really down with Faith. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I, I, um, my my feelings towards Faith are complicated. Uh, <laughs> in that I really fancy her, and I know that's wrong. You're not the only one. Uh, she would be. She's just bad news. But what magnificent yeah. bad news it would be. Um, <laughs> and uh, you know. Uh, no, nobody's going to survive that well and, and stuff. But, uh, yeah, we did. We did argue these things through at great length. Um, I would have loved I'm to, to remember see those conversations. Way, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, we, well, you know, because a lot of a lot of what you're doing is what is what you do on your podcast, which is mm-hmm. just discussing mm-hmm. things and whatever. But but we have to come up with a decision at the end. And and the way we did it was we divided up the pages between us. Mm-hmm. And whoever started a page got to make the final decisions. Oh, and I that's can't fair. remember I with that one. That's because, fair. Because there was, stuff, there was stuff we just didn't agree on, you know. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I think that was one of them. And I think, I think actually on that one, it was the editorial team who decided on that one. <laughs> okay. I can't I like remember. It. That, sounds like, that sounds like I'm, you know, uh, dodging the dodging the responsibility, but I'll, I think, I'll accept it. I'll allow it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think because I, I, I think I think also there was a feeling that actually because it gets reversed because Faith doesn't win in, in the following episodes, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, you know, it's not it's not like she defeats Buffy for good, which is what happens in the other duels and stuff. So, so yeah, that was. I think that was what we got talked about. I may have been the one who who argued against the case, but I, I I'm going to say I didn't, and there's nobody here to contradict. Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um, Marcella, did you have any other questions? No. Uh, just to say that this is definitely when I got it for my birthday. <laughs> so thank you, Camila. You're welcome. <laughs> and I opened it. And I looked at the first two pages and I said, nope, I have to wait until I can sit here and read this entire book. And yes. then a couple of days later, I sat down and I read the whole thing. Yeah, me too. I read the whole thing in like one sitting. And then Dan, my husband, Dan, was super excited also to read it because I was like shouting out random specs to him. He's like, stop it. I want to read it for myself. <laughs> well, stop looking over my shoulder. I know. Get off my lap, buddy. <laughs> you know, so so how, do, how does the relationship work? Are you, are you like, my wife refers to herself as a Doctor Who widow. And, uh, <laughs> well, the so, funny so, thing is, well, that was one of the things that brought um, my husband and I together, actually, was our, our, our love of Buffy. It was like we oh. were... I think we were dating sort of kind of, or just like hanging out intensely for a couple weeks. And I played a song on the jukebox at a bar from, um, 
uh, Harsh Light of Day, ah, the nice. Devil Doll song. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he immediately knew what it was. And I was like, oh, nice. was that was like, on yeah. a jukebox? Yes, it was on a jukebox. Wow. <laughs> and um, wow. and that was it. Man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And so, yeah. And so, I mean, he was like, uh, yeah. And we made that connection. It's like, oh my God, you like Buffy? So do I. And then we had our little backstories. And then, um, yeah, he's been on a couple episodes of our podcast. He, um, I was working for Nicholas Brendan for a couple years, traveling around to Comic Cons with him, and Dan was on that road too, and he was super stoked about it. <laughs> and he's like, his thing is um, Cordelia, like that's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's very, that, you know, that's a, that's a that's a man with good taste in women. Like <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah. So um, yeah, like he's totally down for like anytime we do a rewatch, he's all he's all in. <laughs> So the last question I have for you, since you're a Whovian as well, are what are your thoughts on the new doctor? Are you excited? Are you not excited? Oh, yeah, yeah, really, really excited. Okay, good. (laughs) Good. I was, uh, sorry, I was, uh, when it was announced, when they showed the clip of her walking through the trees and she pulls down her hood and it's Jodie Whittaker, um, I I was at a music festival where I was about to go on stage to do a talk about the science of Doctor Who. Nice. And um, and it was, it was, so it was a bit surreal. I was literally stood in the, they didn't have a green room. They had a sort of green section of the, <laughs> the tents. Had a green box. And stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and I, so I was trying to, I was stood in the one bit of the, of that area where you could get a Wi-Fi signal to, to watch the clip as it went out. Um, and they were, they were like other, because it was known that this sort of four foot square place was one bit that you could get a signal. <laughs> there were loads of people do it on phone calls and whatever. And I was aware as I was watching the clip that there were people watching it over my shoulder. <laughs> and I turned around and there's like eight, nine people there, which is weird. And then, um, then I, I managed to download onto my phone the picture that they put out. So when I went on stage, I put that up on the projector that they had and went, this is the new Doctor Who, and got a huge round of applause for that. Uh, And then because it was a music festival and people were drinking, they then all turned back to their drinks and conversations and completely (laughs) ignored me. So it's like, like, this is the weirdest. I've already been upstaged by her. She's she's only been Doctor Who for 30 seconds. uh, But she's she's amazing. I I knew her Mm. in... uh, I knew her from Broadchurch. Yeah, she's a fantastic um, actress. She's absolutely amazing, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm just really excited. It, and, and like the thing it's done here, so like my son watches Doctor Who a bit, and he watched the last series of Doctor Who. I think mostly because it meant staying up past his bedtime because <laughs> he wanted to watch it. And it's and it's always been something that I've been into, and he kind of you know, knows that it's my thing. Mm-hmm. And he's been to some events and whatever. But the next morning, like taking him to school, all the mums were talking about it. All the, you know, people who never talk about Doctor Who were going, you know, I think they all expected me to be outraged. And they were all a bit <laughs> disappointed that I was like, no, it's cool, man. And, no, uh, that's the brilliance of Doctor Who. That's what I love yeah, about yeah. it. And, and And it's a bold and exciting thing to do and about time and stuff mm-hmm. you know about time they did it um so yeah i yeah, loved I'm missy very... so missy was great i loved yeah, yeah. what they did with the master making missy out of the master it was she was an amazing actress it was a great storyline so i'm excited yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> really i mean you know it's all it's all very exciting um so i can't wait you know I'm, it's probably gonna be on in the autumn so yeah just just waiting for that. and i you know i'm peripherally involved in sort of bits and pieces that will be out at the time so so it's all very exciting it's very exciting times to be a doctor who fan at the moment yeah so we're going we're not going to keep you much longer i know your son is patiently waiting for you to get back into harry potter so yeah, um yeah. where can people find you on the internet when your works and things like that well, I, uh, just before i do that i can i just do a shout out to um, please we've mentioned my co-author steve Yes. I'd really like to mention um, Ilaria uh, Vescovo, the, the illustrator on Slayer Wonderful Slayer. illustrations. Thank you, yes. Wonderful who, illustrations. Um, who me and Steve have never met or spoken to. Oh, um, wow. Because we, we did the copy and delivered the copy. And then um, 
then didn't hear anything for ages until we were sent uh, at the book, basically, to print. <laughs> um, oh, wow. And she's done such an amazing job yeah. Um, yeah. of taking our silly ideas and, and making them... Not only has she illustrated them really well, she's illustrated them really clearly. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the big thing about, you know, having done a, an infographics book before with, with Ben Morris, the thing that, that's really important is getting the idea across clearly and simply. Um, and, and she's done that really, really beautifully. And then uh, uh, the, the designer of the book, a, a guy called Stuart Smith, he's done a lot of the, um, the charts and diagrams and stuff. And again, you know, I, 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 me and Steve were both really keen um, to sort of mention what a contribution they made and, and how how pleased we are with what they did. Um, yeah, it looks fantastic. And her illustration of the Hellmouth is not what I would have thought the Hellmouth looked like. And right. now I'm 10 times more freaked out by it. Exactly. Because it looks like a giant Fruit Loop on fire. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And, and, yeah, and, and, you know, we gave them briefs and stuff. And some of the briefs we gave uh, were quite hard and stuff. And they, what, what's amazing is they took our sort of tangled instructions and made everything look quite simple and straightforward, which I'm, uh, you know, I can't tell you how, 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 pleased i am with them um so yes check those people out they're they're very talented awesome we, yeah do. we definitely will because this book is amazing mm-hmm. and again simon where do few people find you and your works on where can yes because i need to buy the doctor I'm... who book oh, there's so much stuff i need to go buy <laughs> uh, well yes who graphica is available from uh, bbc books uh, in the u.s and in the uk uh you can find me by googling me that's probably the easiest thing Okay. Uh, and my surname is spelled G U E R R I E R. And the Buffy connection there is that if you take out the vowels, it says grr, like a <laughs> um, uh, But I have a, I, I have a blog which uh, is uh, nothing tra la la after a line in Labyrinth. Uh, I love it. it says. Uh, and that's zero T R A L A L A. Uh, and uh, that's also my handle on Twitter. Um, and come pester me and offer me work. I am I am very cheap and quick. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding. Dude, you have been such a delight. Um, I am so pleased that you took the time out to chat with us. Um, I never would have thought that, you know, I just randomly tweeted at you i just randomly added you and you're like yes let's do this so well, I, I saw your i saw your um you know when you did that and i saw your your podcast i was really interested because i'm like one of the things i wanted to ask you about was i was watching buffy going if you were making buffy now you'd make the representation much that would be something you'd need to address yes it's mm-hmm. very it's very white buffy. oh so white so white. So very Yes, white. I think we had a chart somewhere uh, about how many people of color are actually <laughs> on, how many uh, characters are on Buffy that are of color. It's and, small. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a short number. Um, it's a, they, they don't live very long either. No, no they don't. Um, yeah, I think I even had it like marked down. Like I gave each character like one, two, three, four, five, six. There are six um, characters that, you know, and we kind of had them as people that spoke and had something to do with the 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 um the the story the storyline and whatnot so um yeah so there are only and like how many numbers of episodes they have so actually no there were seven because i forgot to put forest in there <laughs> um wow. but yeah so and the one who lasts the longest the only one who lasts the longest is principal wood mm-hmm. he's in there for 14 episodes yeah 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 and, and so when you're when you're because this is what we had watching it again you're doing this you're doing a podcast mm. what have you seen that's new what has surprised you watching it again oh uh, well we are we are up to we just completed um our rewatch of season four yeah um yeah. so i think we we're... were just talking about why buffy and willow were not roommates from the very beginning right that's something we picked out that we didn't pick out before and there's always like other like little things like and we you know we add you know quite a bit of our again having fun with it but not making fun of it right. per se um most of the time <laughs> yeah most of the time <laughs> um we realized a lot like how much certain characters really did bug us um riley seems to have yeah. been problematic for us we've been told to go easy on tara <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> but i can't i just can't <laughs> um 
but yeah, like they're just, I mean, there's some random things here or there. And I, I, yeah, unfortunately I can't think of anything right off that uh, was surprising to us. I think mostly for me anyway, um, I am surprised at how much of a bitch Buffy, Buffy actually is yeah. to yeah, her friends. Yeah. And there's a lot of times where she's really not that great of a friend, no. especially to Willow. And there's yeah, also, I, we're also like kind of peeve, like we, we were discussing a little bit about how, why does Xander always end up spending Christmas outside by himself? How come nobody invites him over there? Yeah. And how come yeah, nobody yeah. invited Faith to stay at their house? Yes. Why was she <laughs> staying in that motel? <laughs> you have plenty of room, Joyce. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was kind of struck by the birthday episodes. Mm-hmm. Like they try and make a thing out of Buffy's birthday. Yeah. Right. And what and I, what I realized idea. what I realized is that they never make a thing about Xander or Willow's birthday. No. Now. Never. So I was no. trying to work out who's older than who and whatever. And it's just like it's weird to make to to do it year on year about Buffy's birthday. Right. But not about her friends. Right. And it's and does I she, think does she you guys just, been... just forget their birthdays. Is that is that what's going yeah. on? Is she I so wrapped she up in herself? Care. She just she doesn't, doesn't care. care. No, and it's clear. Like I think you guys mentioned in your um and and Xander's infographic that he's a Capricorn. So clearly his birthday is like December. January is that a Capricorn? Right. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, she, she that's, <laughs> so that's like sure. around like that's like around the time like so we were definitely in their universe when xander was having a birthday yeah 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 so yeah, yeah you're yeah. right um, yeah i i think that's i think that's what i really liked both both on on this book and um the doctor who book thinking you know, and i've written lots of doctor who books and lots of doctor who stuff but thinking about it visually really gives you a new perspective on stuff you suddenly notice all sorts of things you've never noticed before mm-hmm. um, and, and actually just watching buffy again was a real pleasure oh yeah i i've i've run through it i can't even count how many times now and it doesn't get old to me right I we'll watch it until the day i die i mean there are certain episodes i tend to skip restless but um bad eggs <laughs> bad eggs you're bad sometimes Ted. <laughs> but yeah it's always delightful to it's like you know hanging out with an old friend mm-hmm. and even having do you guys end up going do you are you you have any plans on going to any comic cons taking the book and your your newfound knowledge and whatnot <laughs> or you know or have you been it. doing that with the who books i've done it a bit with the who books i've been to quite a few conventions with the who books mm-hmm. um I I might be doing a Doctor Who convention in the States at the beginning of next year. Maybe it's all a bit early days. Right. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I, the, 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 I'm not sure there's the budget to fly us over to the States at the moment. Right. Um, uh, I have talked to a couple of people about a Buffy thing here, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I tend to go where I'm asked, really. Um, yeah. The, um... the idea that I, I would do that you know and comic-con is such an enormous uh thing i, I think i'm doing comic-con in september for a doctor who book but but again i haven't been told yet you know it's right me the weekend before but you um, guys i know that there's a lot of um awesome comic cons that happen over there and also like buffy's specific events and stuff so if anybody yeah, out, I, if anybody's I, out there get at them i'm, I'm open to invitations yes Yay. all right <clears throat> well again simon you have been a wonderful guest and um oh. and a super duper buffy fan uh we love we had super a lot of fun geeking out with you mm-hmm. and oh, it's been um, my pleasure thank you very much for having me of course and uh you know don't be a stranger on the twitterverse and um you know again thanks man yeah <laughs> thank you all right, that was uh, Simon Greer. He's so great. He was amazing. He was super sweet for talking to us. One of the things I really liked about him, mm-hmm. and we have talked about this before, mm-hmm. is the shit he called both ways on Brits doing American right. accents and Americans doing Brit accents. Exactly. And he called out Benedict Cumberbatch, who we've talked about <laughs> yes. as Doctor Strange <laughs> is awful. His <laughs> Doctor Strange. Why? <laughs> Why do you sound like that? It's so gross. Or God of Thunder. Why do your R's all sound like that? Yes. Oh, just an old pal Xander. Yes, it's so gross. <laughs> and he's a huge Whovian, so. Yeah, so Marcella was already enamored with that. Yes. Um, yeah, he was super cool. Uh, we're un- Unfortunately, we weren't able to speak to Simon. Um, Steve. Steve. <laughs> 
Oh my god. <laughs> it's like Stephen Barry. Remember that? <laughs> we weren't able to talk to the other one, but hopefully like he got busy. Maybe he will um, you know, listen to how much fun we had with Simon and want to be on the show yeah. and want to talk to us yeah. as well. <laughs> so uh yeah, you guys go like find Simon on the interwebs and his blogs and buy the book. Uh it makes for perfect gifts. Yes. Uh, buy one for yourself and buy one for every puffy exactly, fan. You know. Exactly. So you should at least be purchasing two. Um all right, so we're gonna get into now episode rankings. Dun, dun, dun. We picked. Well, do you want to go bottom to top? Yeah, let's do that. And uh, you can go ahead and start. Okay, so my, well, we actually picked, this is really funny. We both picked the same best episode and worst episode. Yes, we did. It's, yeah, you want us to go back and forth. Yeah, we like disagree in the middle. <laughs> right. And it was weird too because it was almost like they were switched. Like my number mm-hmm. eight would be like your number 11 mm-hmm. and vice versa. <laughs> yep. They were close. Yeah. But so we agree. Worst episode. Restless. Is restless. So far. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the second worst. We be bad. bad. <laughs> Actually, our bottom is pretty much the same. Right. I have uh, going up. Up goodbye Iowa. Yep, so do I. Where the wild things are. Yep, we agreed. This is where we start to get different because you put doomed I all put the way doomed. down here. And the only reason why I put doomed <laughs> is because I can never remember what the episode is. I went back <laughs> when I was trying to remember <laughs> when I was trying to remember <laughs> which episodes these were. I went back to the website and just saw like the screen caps mm-hmm. and like what the little things that we talked about. For the life of me, I can't remember. <laughs> like I can never remember what the fuck doomed is about. <laughs> I love it because Giles looks like he gets murdered he just gets knocked unconscious but he should be dead okay and spike it's the one where spike tries to stake himself okay all right he's suicidal okay <laughs> his speech at the end alone oh is this the, this is the one where he figures out that he can he kill can hurt demons. a demon all right yeah okay so yeah. i might have to just go ahead and switch that around at least like the freshman go fl- i'm gonna flip that so the so freshman i had i in team because i just it's I know I love the music breakdown when Buffy and Riley are having sex. That is a great yeah. scene, and but <laughs> whatever. Um, and then living conditions. Yeah, I had living conditions down pretty far. Superstar is not a bad episode. It it does give us like the imp- like how to kill Adam. Yeah, that's the only reason why it's that up high. I it, had it up a high little up higher. Me. Yeah, and it's 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 a really neat, interesting concept for an episode yeah it's now that i'm watching it with me two eyes Mm -hmm. it's awful right exactly it's awful yeah it's like okay so that's so jonathan did that how more than once (laughs) he's lucky that everyone seems to forget Mm -hmm. because those twins right he should be in jail yeah he should have been brought up on charges i'm not sure what was going on there Mm -hmm. but it wasn't good that was yeah and that's another thing that we we didn't we forgot to when simon asked us about um new things mm-hmm. we forgot to mention mm-hmm. that like there's a a lot uh, of uh, a, a lot of uh, really questionable things that happen you have to watch it with 90s eyes <laughs> yeah exactly it's like a lot of uh, misogyny mm-hmm. a lot of uh fucking just really wrong sexual yeah um harassment basically and shaming that, yeah shaming there's a lot of teachable moments that were missed yep okay so after superstar i had new moon rising and I think I had that somewhere down towards the end. Mm. I forgot to change my mind from bullets to numbers. Because <laughs> <laughs> um, I had living conditions. Or yeah, like I new, had it further yeah. down. Yeah. Um, and New Moon Rising. Because I don't, as good as those episodes are, like New Moon Rising is a good episode, mm-hmm. but it breaks my heart. Right. It's too much pain. I can't do it. It's, it's too much pain for me. Um, fear itself. I had that much higher. Yeah. That came in for... Like, yeah, I see it. So you're number, number three. three. For the fear demon speech by Xander alone. <laughs> Who's a little of, fear demon? And I thought about it and thought about it, but it's just... I think I was just more put off by their actual fears that were in the house. I think that's what I have a problem with. Mm-hmm. And I'm not exactly sure why, what that problem is that I have, but... um. I don't know. I like that it's the one true time that Willow seems to go off on Buffy, ex- uh, other than in Yoko Factor. Right. Because when she, I'm not your sidekick. Right. Like, she is pissed. Yeah. Well, I mean, not, so. you know, beside the whole social face. <laughs> I love <Yes>. that. 
She but starts gets, off real strong. Yes. The insults start off real strong. <laughs> but the moment when Giles has that chainsaw and he comes through that That's door. the only thing. That's the only scene that pops to my mind when I first mm-hmm. think of fear itself. That's what I think of. <laughs> and then how can you not with the hat? The big old... <laughs> Happy Halloween! I can't speak to you like that. I mean, even though it's it's uh, it's an enjoyable it's an enjoyable episode, and I like Um, that they have the callback to that kind of in the when he opens the magic box and he's dressed like the wizard and she just stares at him. (laughs) Mm -mm. Not today. Mm -mm. I'm not doing this with you right mm -mm. now. Nope. (laughs) He's so happy. That might become our new wallpaper. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. Um, Wild at Heart. I hate that episode. I had it in the middle, though. Yeah. I feel like that one should have been. Yeah, I, I that one's wrong. Like, I fear itself definitely higher than Wild at Heart. And me. the reason I hate Wild at Heart is because it makes me cry. Right. And I hate Veruca. I hate that. Oh, she's so, she's just not. She wasn't good. No. Everything she was doing with her neck and blah, blah, blah. Um, after that, Pangs. I had that up higher. <laughs> I'd say Pangs is my number 10. You made a bear. Yeah, get, undo it. Undo it. I think what kind of brings Pangs down for me a little bit is, is Angel's presence. Even though. Now I had I'm, it a little lower, actually. Did you? Yeah. I mean, Angel's presence kind of bums me out yeah a little bit but even though there is some there's some funny moments where like this is him good like he's not like everybody thinks he's evil yes i love that joke that that gag that goes on that's actually super funny (gasps) this is him (laughs) um you can tell that if he would have stuck around i'm fairly certain she would have slept with him too anya yeah oh absolutely Mm -hmm. um number nine i have yoko factor yep uh just because it's it's really good. I I, I appreciate the writing and how um, easily it was for Spike to manipulate everybody oh, and yeah. drop those little bombs. He's so good at it. Yeah, just drop those little bit, just a little bit, and then they just kind of took it on mm-hmm. themselves. What their what they ran with their own insecurities. They were vulnerable, mm-hmm. and he saw that. He found it. Took advantage of it. Got in there. Yep. Just poked the bear. But I like how he also talked himself out of like being killed by Adam at the same time. <laughs> right. He's a <laughs> slick little trickster. He's a slick motherfucker. Oh, hi, Spike. Hold him up. <laughs> uh, number eight, I have Who Are You? I had Primeval. Who I are? have Primeval pretty far up. I had Who Are You higher up mm. because of the Buffy Spike Spe- exchange. Yes. yes. <laughs> much, much higher. That's why it got to where as far as it did for me. Uh, and then this year's girl is um, because of Faith. And I... I yeah, you, that number seven. Yeah, that's I number seven. I had a new seven. man number seven. Which is why... Yeah. Um, and I prefer... Just because I... You know, I mean, I like Eliza Dushku. Mm-hmm. And I like her as Faith. So that's why that one's higher than the other. Number six, I have something blue. Yep, me too. A number Which fa- was real hard because I love that episode. <laughs> Yeah. But when I I looked at what was remaining, I was like, shit. Yeah. I can't put it any higher than that. Exactly. Like, it's a good and enjoyable episode. And it's funny and so funny. Like, Mm -hmm. just Giles' comedic, like, oh, my God, his uh, physical comedy in Mm -hmm. itself. That's so, so worth it. Especially when he falls over. (laughs) Or when Xander's, like, waving his hand in front of his face. You smell like fruit (laughs) roll-ups. And they're making out. And they're like, can I be blind too? <laughs> I can hear the smacking. <laughs> I love that episode. Um, number five is primeval because of the fight, the end fight scene. And um, I had, this is where I put this year's girl and who are you back to back at four and five. Okay. Um, which again, I still feel like Buffy should have like, because of that, that uh, fight scene, Buffy should have still been like kissing everybody's ass for longer. Mm-hmm. Uh, number four, a new man. I had this year's girl. <laughs> number three is Hush. I had Fear Itself. Ooh, number two, The Initiative. And I had Hush as number two. Okay. I'm surprised you had Initiative so high. I, You know what? And I should have made a note as to why I had it that high. Um, I, I know I had a reason. <laughs> is that the one when Spike gets caught? Or wakes up there? Yeah, that's when Spike escapes and it's the whole exchange between him and Willow. 
that's I think that's why I have it so high um because he's escaped and he and we're seeing his how <laughs> he's trying to go ahead and, and go his on near, <laughs> near assault of willow as well yeah exactly um and then we both agree on the number one harsh light of day harsh light of day oh yeah all day <laughs> all day harsh light of day that's what's on me yep and um so if you guys um some of you may be aware that we opened up a listeners poll I'm uh, shocked by the answers me too a little bit uh so yeah um I asked folks to let me to vote for your top three episodes of season four your top three favorite episodes of season four and I got 21 responses which is cool cool I'm totally I, that's better than what way more than I expected yeah me too um a lot more than we usually mm-hmm. get so good on you guys yes go. I'm loving Thanks. it yes we're gonna do this again for next season so be aware um so yeah so the number one was Hush at 71% <clears throat> which everybody has a hard on for Hush yeah not not surprising you know uh number two something blue at 42% which I was a little, a little surprised. That Spike they- and Buffy make out for the first time. It's great. <laughs> I get it. And then number three was Fear Itself at Who's 33%. A little weird even. <laughs> Plus, I love the part where Willow realizes she's eating too much chocolate and she's going to barf. <laughs> and Anya is a bunny. Anya is a bunny. You said wear something frightened. <laughs> so, yeah, that was, um, that was interesting. Mm-hmm. I was intrigued to see this. And uh, I think I'll, I'll probably go ahead and put the entire, re- all of the results on the Facebook page or on our website or something. Perfect. Um, we also went ahead and at, at Mar- Marcella's urging, we did some some favorites. Some favorites. For the season. Favorite couple. My favorite couple was Tara and Willow until about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> when you decided. When I decided it, that it was going to be Riley and Forrest. <laughs> well, I'm going to stick with Tara and Willow. <laughs> But even though, like, they're still at that beginning kind of... They're at their sweet stage, where it's still annoying. Yeah, but Tara's, like, real... Extra. Yeah. (laughs) And it make it... But I I tried to think of, like, what were my other options? Like, Spike and Harmony? I would not pick Tara or Oz and Willow, because that is not a healthy relationship. No. Tara and Willow is pushing the boundary of whether it's a healthy relationship. Mm -hmm. It doesn't turn into an unhealthy relationship until five and six. Right. You know, That's probably little... even six. Mm-hmm. You've got Buffy and Riley. No. That's not a healthy relationship. No. That's not a good couple. No. Because he does not. No. He loves her much more. No, no I don't know. I, it's, it's... The fact that he, like, and this doesn't, I, I, we're putting a lot on season four Riley. It yeah. doesn't really happen until season five. Yeah, exactly. And right. <laughs> I, I try to like give him the benefit of the doubt in season four, but I know what he's about to do. Exactly. And, and I know what, what he's I about to say. That's what I can't. Yeah. It, it keeps fucking me up. Like he keeps saying that he loves her and he doesn't believe that she loves him. That's, that's, that's your fault. <laughs> that's your issue. Not hers. Right. Right. And so that's why I have a problem with them as a couple. Cause I know where they end up. Mm hmm not going to pick Spike and Harmony. No. He likes syphilis more than he likes her. <laughs> I don't know why she keeps going back. I mean, I know. You know why she keeps I going back. I know why she keeps going back. Yeah. Yeah. Harmony's not that bright. No. She, so <laughs> she's like, she's working on her, what is it, your your animal brain? Like the lizard brain? Like that's all she's dealing with right now. Um, the fact that it's season five when she's hiding out because she thinks Buffy's going to kill her. Right, which she's my she's nemesis. Not. I'm her nemesis now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she goes to Spike, and he's all like, "Desperate, are you? Do anything, will you?" She's like, "Oh, well, I sleep with you. Yeah, of course. Oh, yeah, of course." <laughs> <laughs> and he's just like, hmm. yeah. <laughs> "Which uh, I think it kind of took the wind out of his sails a little bit because I did. think he wanted a little bit more of yeah, a, which is a little gross. Yeah, a little bit. A little me too eyes on that one, but <sighs> okay. Mm. Still not tying people up in your closet like Wesley, but." <laughs> <laughs> threatening to take away her bucket oh god wesley um okay favorite so, villain um i'm gonna go with uh ethan ethan rain oh okay for turning giles into yes a- and just yeah, <laughs> i like it stupidity just, yes why do you stick around <laughs> <laughs> i love that so much that is so good i'm picking jonathan Mm. as the biggest villain because what he did is fucked up it was really really fucked really, up John. really fucked up John John 
<laughs> this is not okay. No. This is worse than flying monkeys at the school play yeah. that, that oh, Andrew totally. does. Totally. This is worse. It's worse than the hellhounds. Hellhounds. At the prom. Yeah. This is you made Giles get a calendar with like a swimsuit calendar and Xander had memorabilia. But I will say, I'm not going to say Adam. It's never going to be Adam. No. Because Adam's woke. <laughs> ah, so I he's not right. entirely he's, a villain. He's like damn near Killmonger. Yeah. Like, oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like his ideals are not that bad. Like, right. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah, you're right. You're right. Humans are a little bit too much in our emotions at yeah. times. And, you know, demons fail at technology. <laughs> yeah. And in Superstar, I love that. Where he, no. <laughs> None of this is right. This is lies. All this shit is lies. <laughs> they lied to you. And the guy like, no, I'm pretty sure that happened. And then he's <laughs> no. like, whatever. I don't have this. Don't have nothing to do with me right now. Yeah. I, I don't need to worry about this. <laughs> y'all got y'all on some bullshit. I got this. shit. To, I got plans. <laughs> um, no. But little did he know the way to kill him would come from that episode. Like I right. said before, that's pretty spot on. I mean, mm-hmm. which is pretty awesome. And I and I. I think I may have because I don't usually watch Superstar. I think I may have forgotten that until like recently. But what I don't understand is they all forgot most of that spell. Right. So why did they remember that? And why wouldn't the government be like out to kill Jonathan for knowing half of their secrets? And And how far did this spell spell go? Because why weren't they like, guys, what the fuck is going on? We have not heard from you in like a week. What's what's going on? Right. Like if you walked outside of the borders of Sunnydale, yeah. did like the news and stuff change? It's just normal. Like, like you yeah. cross the Sunnydale border and it's like just Whoa. instantly. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> uh, favorite hero? I'm going to say Buffy, but I have to explain that. Okay. Please, so it's, please explain. It's not just Buffy. It's the super Buffy. It's the combined. Uh, okay version of Buffy that has everybody right because she stops Adam yeah in the most epic right conclusion possibly of a season okay so if that's what if, okay yeah if that's what we're counting then yes because I was going to kind of kind of give it to Xander for having the idea but mm-hmm. yeah we'll go ahead and give it to super super Buffy super Buffy uh, best burn of the season I do not have anything for this you have enough for both of us yeah I so I decided to give it to harsh light of day mm-hmm. because not only did we pick it for best episode but it had four total burns <laughs> that we had a hard time choosing between and I, I went back and looked at a lot of, a lot of the ones that we had picked uh, and the fact that this episode had four <laughs> yeah that's got to say something yeah that it's all coming from there and so the one we ended up picking for that was, you love a ton more than you love me. I love syphilis more than I love you. That would have that should have been enough right there. Right there. You, you should, know what? I don't need this. <laughs> and then Spike with Harmony. What? Did you lose a bet? <laughs> hey, <laughs> Harmony actually says, hey. <laughs> <laughs> and then her ew like you're too good to work a class <laughs> I love that so much <laughs> she is so put off by she... it <laughs> and it's just little things like that and then we with Spike and the what did it take to pry apart the Slayer's dimpled knee Ooh. well you're gonna find out soon yeah, enough so. yeah. <laughs> yeah. we're gonna find out quite a bit <laughs> Quite a bit. The biggest twist of the season, I would say, was when Adam killed Professor Walsh. Because I didn't see it coming live. Mm-hmm. When it happened, I was like, fuck! What? <laughs> Why? And like that bitch anyway. So, <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye, girl. Uh, I would have to... I will second that, because I can't think of any other... There was only one other thing that came up close to that for mm-hmm. me. And it was that I was cheated on Willow. Yeah, I'm gonna have to in go with that. In a million years, I'm gonna I have to go with that. that. Yeah, that I'm gonna have to go that. with that one. It just it blew me away, and the fact that instead of dealing with his problem, he just fucking ghosted. Right, and also sort of kind of blamed Willow. Yeah, a little bit. Like, and after then to the come fact, back. Yeah. Oh, hey, guess what? I figured it out. I know you've been waiting for me, girl. Yeah. Come on, come yeah. give daddy a hug. Oh what? no, wait, you <laughs> get the fuck away. <laughs> you and your stuff. Right. Your witch stuff. Right. <laughs> I can't deal with it. Apparently, mm-hmm. you know, I got to go. I can't be around you. You too much. It's just like, it's all too much. You smell like another girl. Do you know her son? She's all over you. <laughs> <laughs> 
like all over you. <laughs> it was so fucked up. I love that Tara's just like <laughs> backing up a little, like, um, I'm just gonna grab a little, <laughs> little spray Excuse here. Excuse me, uh, Windex, perfect. Yes, uh-huh. spray. <laughs> that would have been one of those moments had that happened, like, had he come to her door, uh-huh. she would have just slowly <laughs> closed the door in his face, like, I'm busy. Tara no está aquí. (laughs) (laughs) All right. That's season four. That's season four. Um, We were a little pressed for time today, so this is why we didn't do that thorough of a job in recapping. But I think we did pretty well for for starters. Like, this is our first one. So we're going to um, hopefully... You got something out of it. We got a little bit out of it. Yeah. I, I like the. Uh, I you like know, the wrap up. Yeah, I like the wrap up. I like the rankings. Um. So overall, what is your final thought for season four? Where does actually? Here's a better question. Mm. It's a two part question. Two parter. Two parter. Final thought on season four, mm. and in the overall seven season, mm-hmm. where does season four rank for you? Oh, sweet fancy Moses. Um, I think it might be like my. Th- third or fourth favorite yeah. yeah it's somewhere in the middle yeah somewhere in the middle and, and it's that's funny. how i feel about it in general yeah kind of like a middle sibling yeah like it it has its moments it gives us like some really good stuff mm-hmm. uh there's a lot of comedy in there we learn some things we have the beginning of like the, like willow's really good uh character arc um i wish that there had been more in like, I wish more had come of that spell mm-hmm. that they did to join everybody. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I feel like they, there was that a missed opportunity. Seems like something that could have been used <laughs> against Glory. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just saying. I, that seemed like the perfect thing. Yes. And, I'm, and I don't <laughs> remember. Like Diane on Blackish. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just stating facts, y'all. Right? And I don't remember if they mentioned it briefly. Like, so. if it was ever even a thought i don't think so okay yeah did they decide that the that the dreams that was just too much too much (laughs) that was too much cheese man like y'all couldn't just couldn't share a night of dreams because apparently that only happened it was one One night night. it was a one night only couple hours (laughs) didn't seem that bad because now knowing what to expect you can kind of go in a little bit prepared and i think she's not that upset anymore you kind of worked all that out yeah she was like She's oh. not going to attack you again. No, that was just like. I mean, it might be the second slit. Like it, it, oh, that. That would have been would really awesome. Neat. A different pissed off Slayer every time they that do it. That would be it. amazing. That would be great. Missed opportunities. Mm-hmm. So yeah, what about I you? do feel I, I agreed with Simon mm-hmm. with his saying they misuse Giles a bit in that. A little bit, yeah. They do. They don't have anything for him to do. No. And it kind of happens in season five too. He just doesn't have anything to do. <laughs> And to, even though, you know, she's like, be my watcher again. And he's still, yeah, it's still like you're finding him busy work. Yes. It's like, oh, well, I guess you can train me. Oh, well, I guess, you know, I know that Willow's much more inept and much more, you know, good, much better at this than yeah. you are. But could you look in some of your old books? Maybe? Yeah. And there is a part where he in season four, she goes to him to tell him about the two wild dogs mm-hmm. when Professor Walsh is attacked. And he's mm-hmm. like, he's so excited. And she's like, yes. Lucky for you, people might be in danger. And it's like, okay, easy. Number one. You're in my home. Right. (laughs) Yes, he's a little bored. (laughs) But you know what? (laughs) But they do. They misuse him from season four all the way through the rest of the show. Mm -hmm. You know, to the point where he actually leaves and comes back. Right. He's like, look, y'all, I don't have nothing to do. I'm going back to England. Olivia's over there. Mm -hmm. And And I've got like five shows on the on the BBC. (laughs) I think uh, five. Uh, 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 there was no need for me to be no. over here in the States. No. But it's a middling show. It's a middling season. Mm. It's not season seven. Right. But it's not season two. No. It's definitely not. No. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's strong mm-hmm. and holds its place. It has um, a lot more episodes that I find enjoyable. A lot less episodes that I skip. Yeah. There might be two, three and this one tops that I choose not to watch or wild it, or, um, I, or I will nap during. Where the Wild Things Are is my number one skip in this season. Yeah. I choose not to watch it all. I just don't like it. I don't want to watch Buffy and Riley have sex the entire, no. the entire episode. No, seriously. I don't like, care about the who, you, whoever yeah. smelt it, dealt it lady <laughs> and those yeah. weird ghosts. I just don't care about anything in that episode. Actually, that one should have really been like my second 
bottom. Because like, even though beer bad is bad, do you know why it gets a tick up why? above beer bad? Why the scene between the scenes between Anya and Spike? When Spike tries to mug Anya in the, oh, yeah. <laughs> in the alleyway for her money. And You're then not even bumpy. Yeah. Their whole conversation at the bronze about going to Drew's, let's go kill Xander, right. we'll go kill Drew. It's great. That is that is spot on. Those are the only parts of that episode that I enjoy. Yeah, it is really good at that for that. Yeah. Right at that. Yeah. But you guys tell us what you think of season four. Please do. Um, you can call us and leave a voice message at. Hold on, let me pull it up. I think it's, it's gone. It's a four one two something. Yeah, it's gone. It's from my. It's not in my notes anymore. <laughs> Damn, we took it off hell. of this one. <laughs> it's on every bumper sticker. I know, and... like everything else. All right, so yeah, so we have a phone Wait, number. I might or have you... one in my wallet. Or you can send us an email. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> ill prepared right now. You can. <laughs> You can send us an email at revisitingsunnydale at gmail.com, which would be awesome sauce. Um, yeah, let us know what you thought of it. Ha-ha! Thank you. Chinga day. I have a whole stack right here. <laughs> um, leave a voicemail message at 412-385-7250. Um, let us know what you think of season four. If you had any rankings that you did not agree with, what where we ranked some of our favorites or some of our least favorites. Come at me, bro. I know. I want to hear it. Like we want mm-hmm. we, not an, we don't we want a discussion. We want yep. a lively discussion. We don't need arguments per se, but um we're not trying to shame anybody and we don't want to be shamed for our choices nope. either. But let us know. <laughs> so um we can't wait to get started on season five. Oh my god. But before that, like we said, we're going to get drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to Uber. Uh, right. <laughs> and watch First Daughter. Yeah, is that gonna be just like an all day th- like we just you come over on yeah. Saturday, we drink, watch it, yep. and then record it immediately after. Yep. We should right. also get Lost Boys in there too. Yeah. Let's just do a whole yeah, we should do that. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, we got plans for you. We got stuff happening. Um, we're going to do some a lot more reviewing, a lot more talking, and hopefully get some more guests in the future. Mm-hmm. Once again, thank you to our guest Simon Guerrero. Mm-hmm. Just think of Saul Guerrero from he 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 mentioned Saul Guerrero from Rogue One. I was like, oh, now I get it. It's spelled differently, <laughs> but you say it the same way. <laughs> Simon Guerrero. <laughs> follow us on all follow us like us on all the things subscribe to us on iTunes Libsyn Player FM and iHeart Radio Radio <laughs> um, thank you for listening thank you for being our friends and our listeners mm-hmm. uh, you can get at us on Twitter at Back to Sunnydale or me Camila at the underscore Rugged Angel or me Marcel at msphere 7338 okay it's a hot box in my studio so we're gonna peace out now before till- we pass out <laughs> Till next time, guys.